Okay, it's C. Lindelof videos. Solving algebraic proportions, a really quick video. Hope this helps. It starts off with this thing called means extremes, and it just suggests this. If we have a, a proportion where A over B equals C over D, if this is true, then what also has to be true is this, that A times D has to equal B times C. So it's kind of a test where when it starts out. So it's this kind of really weird thing. So if I say to you, I believe that one half is equal to two fourths, then the way I would you would be able to test that is to say, well, Lindelof, if I do four times one, I get four here. If I do two times two, I also get four. So then you can assume that this is a true this is a true proportion. You could do it the other way, right? You could say, okay, I think that one half is equal to two-thirds or somebody might say that to you and then you could go back and test it say let me use means extremes and four and three times one is three however two times two is four and three is not equal to four so no all right it is that simple uh, and what happens is we we use this and we apply it with algebra but this is the basis of what we're doing so let's just look at this example really quickly we're just going to do two or three examples because I don't want to overburden you with a bunch of junk to watch. I'm sure you have more important things to do, but it works. It does work like this. So I'm looking at this proportion and I'm asking myself, is this, I'm not asking myself, is this true? I'm looking for the number N that makes this true. So what I'm going to do is just like I said before, I'm going to cross multiply this times this and this times this. So eight times N is eight N, right? 10 times 10 is a hundred. This is a really quick one. And then to solve, I just divide both sides by 8, dividing by 8, and I actually, sorry, but I checked this on my calculator because 100 divided by 8 is 12.5. And just to set this up to prove it, so I'm suggesting to you that 10 over 8 is the same as 12.5 over 10. And to test that, you just use means extreme to see if you got your answer right. And you get 100 here, and then 8 times 12.5, again, is 100. So this is your correct answer. All right, let's just do one more and then we're going to go on to uh, one that's more difficult where you have to distribute because those are the ones that you're probably more interested in. But let's do this one really quickly. Let's do this one really quickly. So here's this. You can see it's the same thing. And I, on this one, I'm not going to grind out the calculations because I think it's more important for us to get to the other problems. But I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to multiply here and here and get 7 times 3 is 21, and 5 times x is 5x, right? Again, dividing both sides by 5, divide by 5, and we get x equals 21 divided by 5, which I think is 4.2. I think it's 4.2, but I'm not going to actually grind this out with you. You could check that out. And also, look at how your teacher or your professor is asking for his or her answers. <laughs> because if they want them in fractional form, you can just leave it. I wouldn't, you don't have to grind out the rest, all right? All right, let's go to something that's a little bit more difficult. Here's one right here, I think. Let's look at this one really quickly because this is the second type of problem that you're most likely to see. So let's just do this one. If you can see, it is the same problem, right? You're trying to figure out what's the missing value here. And to find the missing value, you're going to cross multiply. You're going to use means extremes. The thing that screws people up is this. When you multiply this 10, it has to be times this quantity. So there are these assumed parentheses that you can't see. So just to show you what this would look like if I if I wrote it out, it would be 5 times 7, right? So the means times the extremes there. And then 10 times this, let me do it this way, this B plus 5. So this B plus 5, right? So this is where the mistake is made doing problems like this. I just wanted to make sure I showed you that. And then I'm going to do, obviously, uh, 5 times 7 is 35. And then it's 10 times B, which is 10B. 10 times 5 is 50, right? I'm going to subtract, right? Just going to do the algebra really quick. This is our last problem. Minus 50 here minus 50 here we get negative 15 equals 10 b dividing by 10 on both sides dividing by 10 we get b equals 
negative 1.5. So I saw this answer originally. I was like, how the hell can that be possible? But if you put it in this B value, right, you get 7 over negative 1.5 plus 5. So the bottom doesn't end up staying negative. I'm not going to bore you with the whole thing. But if I did this, I would end up with 7 over 3.5. So it doesn't turn out to be a negative answer on the left-hand side. Somebody asked me that a little bit earlier. All right, and then you could keep moving to prove that this is true, but it is true. Well, hell, let's look at it really quick. 5 times 7 is 35. 3.5 times 10 is 35. So this is true. All right, I hope this is helpful. I tried to keep it short as I could. This is something you're going to see. This actually shows up, as you know, in geometry, shows up in trig and in calculus. This, is, this math doesn't go away, and that's why it's worth looking at today. Hey, I hope the video was helpful. If you haven't already subscribed, please do.